I'll stop posing. Uh, hello! Uh, today, as you might have guessed, I'm doing a review on A Stranger in the House, which is Shari Lapina's second book. If you have been subscribed to my channel for a while, or if you just happen to see my other video and that's where you've come from, I did a review a wee while ago on her other book, which was The Couple Next Door, which I read in June this year. And when I read that, somebody asked me in the comments if I would review her other book when it came out. And I put it off for a little while, purely because when there was a, a chapter of of that book or like the prologue or something in The Couple Next Door. And when I read it, I wasn't really like that interested by the storyline to be quite honest with you. So I was like, mm, maybe. But then I've been really enjoying thriller books this year. I should have another review for you call of a book called The Girlfriend, which I'm trying to sort out at the moment. Yeah, I thought I might as well just read it because I really enjoyed this book, The Couple Next Door. I finished it in like three days, which is unheard of for me. This book I also finished in like less than a week, but purely because I had quite a bit of time on my hands at work so I was just reading when it was quiet. So the book is about a stranger in the house. So it's about this couple, I've like forgotten their names already, like I only just finished it the other day. Karen and Tom I think her boyfriend or her, her husband's name is and they're also the other kind of character in it is their neighbour across the street Bridget. They live a relatively normal lifestyle and they've been married for like three years and one day she has an accident and she can't remember anything. The, I'm not gonna lie that like the whole amnesia thing I'm not crazy about it as a storyline. I feel like it's a bit of a cop out for a lot of things but that's what it was. I think that's one of the reasons I wasn't interested in, interested in it in the first place. So basically she's found she drives into like a they see like a pole, but I think it must be like a street lamp type thing in this really dodgy part of town and she can't remember why and it kind of flips back in between different people and there's these kids find this dead body in this restaurant in this dodgy part of town and they take all his eyes, like they take their ID and everything um, and then they just leave him but essentially the same night that Karen had her accident there's a guy shot in this like abandoned restaurant in town and they're trying to figure out like what caused Karen to be like in that area of town what caused her to like be driving at such a speed that she like drove into a speed uh, like a into a lamp like a, a pole like what it doesn't make sense but she the last thing she remembers is she was like preparing dinner for her husband and that's like all she remembers like when he gets home from work he instantly kind of panics but like and I read someone else saying like this is quite weird like instead of being like worried about where she is he's annoyed like that she hasn't texted him so he, she's like left her phone, her purse, her keys, she's left the door open, uh, not the door open but the door unlocked, left lights on and everything and just like her meal like in the middle of being done so he's like annoyed rather than worried which is bizarre so anyway he gets this call saying that she's in hospital so he rushes to see her and this is where you kind of get to know a bit more about their neighbour Bridget as well so Tom was really off with her in the hospital and it turns out that they had an affair like before he met Karen. So Bridget lives across the street with her husband Bob and she's kind of over him but like they've been trying to have kids and all this stuff and they haven't so it's put a lot of strain in the relationship. So she had a, an affair with Tom, said like I'm splitting up with Bob, like it's over, we're both seeing other people but that was a lie. When Tom found out that was a lie he finished it with Bridget never told Karen and obviously Bob never found out either. So Karen's completely in the dark about that and she doesn't know that's why Tom's really off with her whenever he sees her, he finds it really bizarre. So that's kind of where the storyline starts and for ages she just doesn't remember anything, doesn't know what happened. And then it comes out, basically like to cut a long story short, there are spoilers here and I'm gonna completely spoil this because I'm not gonna insist that you go and read this one because I didn't enjoy it as much as the first one. I pretty much predicted the whole storyline, which I'm really upset about. Sorry, I've broken away from the story to tell you this. But I just like nothing that happened, I didn't see coming. I read to the very end, I kept reading, I kept persisting, thinking that something's gonna happen and I'm gonna be like, whoa. But it just didn't. Nothing happened that I didn't predict. I don't know if it's because I've been reading some thrillers this year. I mean, I haven't read loads, but I've read quite a few. Like, maybe three or four. I don't know. Oh, I just bought tea away. Like, how? Oh. But I just saw everything coming. And with L Shari Lupina's writing, I just didn't expect that. And it is almost like somebody else wrote it and just used her name. Because it's just not the page turner. It's not the suspense. It's not the shock. The th like, it's just not the same. And that was very disappointing. So I'll tell you all the spoilers. I'll tell you exactly what happens in this story. Let me just get comfy properly. Um, I'll tell you everything that happens just to save you the bother. So it comes out that basically the police come into her house. 
They want to know why, like, this perfect citizen was speeding in a bad side of town and essentially, like, they just want to find out what's going on. So eventually the, these detectives, and it's Detective Razback who's in the couple next door who I really liked, they find the body, then they look up whatever, whatever else happened in that area that night, they link it with Karen's um, accident, so then they start looking into her. So, I mean... They are looking into her, they want to know what happened, like why she was there, which is fair enough, like what was she doing in that part of town, does she have any recollection of it, but of course she's pulling the amnesia card, so... <sighs> but it kind of, like the relationship's kind of pulled apart a bit, like Tom and Karen's relationship is pulled apart a bit by this whole thing. Karen's also really suspicious that someone's been in her house, like things keep moving, like it's, she's like taking pictures of things like before, like in the morning and then in the evening and seeing how things have changed, like someone took the top off of her perfume bottle, there was a glass where she hadn't left it, there's all these little things that were happening. So yeah, there was that. But it comes to light essentially that, I don't know whether to give you all the little details or just go for like the shortened story. I'll not waste your time, let's just do the shortened story. Basically, Karen left behind a glove at the scene of the incident, which her and Tom both lied to the police and say that they have never had a pink glove with floral sleeves. I mean, it's quite a specific thing, but they deny it. Tom's like, why are we lying about this? I don't understand. Essentially, Karen is not who she says she is, which does not come as a shock at all. It's also very similar to a TV program I'm watching right now. So, Karen, it comes to light that Karen does know the man who was killed in the restaurant. She tells her, I think she tells her husband, like, yeah, like, that was my ex-husband. I ran away from him because he was really abusive. So she'd been going to this abused woman center for like a year. And then after a year, she faked her own suicide. So she like really thought it through. She hired a car, drove it out to this bridge. And then the next day, when I say hired a car, I think she like bought it with cash. So it was like not traceable. Then she drove out to the bridge with her other car and walked around the bridge for a bit. And then I think just made it look like she jumped off and then she ran off into her new life. And then she met Tom when she was temping for him and they fell in love. But like he was always suspicious as to why she was so guarded. So was Bridget. Bridget really begrudged that about her. So it comes to light that basically the day that he was killed and the whole accident happened, he had come to the house and he was like looking around the house looking for her. And... Bridget went out to speak to him and was like, do you know her? Like, what's going on? And he was like, oh, from another life. And he looked really sinister when he said it. So she was suspicious. Suspicious. So she called Tom and said, can we meet at the bench? Which was like their old meeting spot. So they were going to meet at the bench that night, which pulled apart Tom's kind of alibi by saying he was at work because he did go to meet her at the bench that night. Bridget did not turn up because she had to go and help her sister with an emergency. Right. The police pulled apart Tom's alibi being like, well, they said you left work at eight, but you didn't get home till such and such time. What did you do for all that time? He said he was just driving around because he likes to drive. Karen knew he didn't like to drive, so knew that that was wrong. And so, God, I'm rambling so much about the storyline. It's not even that deep. I'll just get down to tell you what happened. He called Karen that night on like a burner phone, asked her to meet him in the restaurant. And because she was so scared and like sh she didn't know what happened, she had this gun, so she took it, she went and met him, and she shot him three times. What she didn't know though, was Bridget was obsessed with Karen and Tom. She really wanted to get Tom back, she envied them, the life that they had, and this was an opportunity for her. So she followed them, and then she like, plant, like she picked up the gun, she planted it, and like tried to frame Karen for doing this crime. And at this point, we're just never sure, like was it Karen or was it Bridget, because they were both at the scene of the crime. Bridget claims that she went there, and Karen shot her, and then came out in a panic, you know, struggled to get her key in the car because the gloves so ripped the gloves off, dropped the gun, and drove off, and then crashed. Had she not crashed, she would have got away with it because there would be nothing to link Karen in her new identity to this man. They would have just looked up this man, seen that his wife died a few years ago, and then wrote it off like they couldn't link him it to Karen. However, the police discovered her about her old identity. They, they discovered everything. But the detective kind of felt sorry for her because he thought, oh, she's probably a battered wife, was really worried. And her lawyer went to her old abuse centre, confirmed that she went there for like a year. And so it was all, you know, kind of seemed like fair game. Bridget was thoroughly obsessed with Tom, wanted to get him back. And when 
Karen was in jail, like in prison, like what, cause you don't get bail on murder charge. She went over to Tom one night and said I was there and basically blackmailed him into sleeping with her that night and then did the same again the next night. Tom was utterly disgusted with himself. Karen ends up finding out about the whole affair and like him sleeping with her. But at that point the relationship was so messy, like she's in jail for a murder charge. It's, it's messed up. But basically in the end, I go straight to the end, because Bridget has mishandled evidence and, and tried to think, so they basically just blame it on each other. Like Karen swears down that when she left he was still alive. Bridget swears down that, that Karen shot her. They like, they, it's a heat. It's just, just a one against the other. Like they can't win the case basically. So I think it gets chucked out and they're both back home. And eventually we find out that what happens is Karen did shoot him. Karen was not a battered wife. Karen would never be a battered wife, she claims. But of course she doesn't tell Tom this even after they've agreed to, to be upfront and honest with her. No, um, Karen just wanted to get away, like he had loads of money, uh, they had like a 2.5 million box of money in, in New York somewhere. I think that's why he came after her, because she had access to it. And yeah, the book basically ends by it coming out that Karen did the whole thing, got away with it, she wasn't a battered wife, she was just fucked up basically. Basically, she just wanted to get out. She started a new life. She was never going to tell Tom, but they've got this 2.5 million um, that she's trying to think how she'll figure out what to do. Like, she's going to have to come up with a way that her and Tom can come into some money. And then at the end, of the very end of the book, Bridget, it basically suggests that Bridget is pregnant. So Bridget has tried so hard to get pregnant with Tom. They've done IVF, all those things. And uh, not with Tom, with Bob. And then like the two times that she slept with Tom, she's basically got pregnant. And that's where the book ends. It's like, Bridget, like they've got a restraining order against her and stuff. And they're hoping that she'll move away. But she's not pregnant with this kid, so that's fucked. So that's the book. I'm sorry I rambled and I like was probably really jumbly. But that's essentially the book. And it's just like reading it, everything was so obvious. It was obvious that Karen did it. It was obvious that Bridget like had some sort of a possession with them because they were always talking about Bridget looking over the window. Bridget like did really weird things. It was Bridget going around the house like smelling the perfume. She just wanted to be Karen. She wanted Karen's life. That was obvious that Karen, uh, like that Bridget had something ooh, to do with it and that she would have followed her that night. It's just obvious because she had an emergency and couldn't meet Tom. Tom was just a shit character like the whole way through like the moment something went wrong with his wife in the perfect life he was just like going into meltdown and Karen just obviously was on hunch like I had a hunch that she hadn't actually been a battered wife and then that happened I just wanted it to like have a big twist and for something else to happen or someone else to be involved or maybe Tom did it like I just wanted something else to happen that I didn't see coming but the whole thing from start to finish I saw coming and I feel really really disappointed yeah but I, I think I knew before I even read it I wasn't gonna like it so maybe my mind was just made up but I did read the whole thing and I have read reviews online and it seems like everyone's on the same page as me they just feel really really disappointed and let down by Shari like do you know what it's it's not terrible, it's not a terrible, terrible book, but for us, like a thriller, I expect some twists that I don't see coming. On the back of the book, they've been very clever and they put praise for Shari Lupina. And reading them, they all seem really familiar and it's all the like reviews and stuff from Couple Next Door. So when it says, you will not see the twists coming, they're not referring to this book, they're referring to the other books. So when I was like waiting for these twists that I wouldn't see coming, they didn't happen. They just didn't happen. So really quite disappointed about that. Sorry for my jumbled expression of it, but explanation of it, but you now don't have to read it because you just don't. Mm. <laughs> my hair was in my teeth. God, that's that book. I thought I would share my thoughts with you since people did ask me to read it and wanted to know what I thought. I will be reading lots more, hopefully, and doing slightly better reviews at some point, probably. I, I think I'm just worried about this one because I, I sat down to do my review of The Girlfriend the other week and I literally just spent an hour explaining the plot and then my camera died, so I was like, ah, okay, so I need to like bring it back. So I can't remember how I did reviews before without just rambling on for like an hour without much. So I don't know. I might try and refilm that now. We shall see. Right, yeah, sorry. Now I'm 
If you read it and you enjoyed it and you think that I'm wrong, please comment down below. If you read it and you didn't like it, please also comment down below and we can discuss. Like this one is a spoiler free one, so for the comments you can go all out. Um, but also please recommend me some good thrillers. Like I loved Couple Next Door. I quite liked Girlfriend. Yeah, I'm d uh, I also read a book called He Said, She Said, which I didn't do a review on, but I did quite like. It was a bit different for me. So yeah, if you've got any recommendations of thrillers, please link them below and I will read them and I'll review them if you want me to. I think I'm overdoing it on the thriller front right now, so I'm gonna try and read something different, but I just love a good thriller. Like there's nothing better than like finishing a chapter and being like, but I wanna know what happens next. And I just never had that with this book. I was just like reading it being like, but I want something good to happen or I want something unexpected to happen the whole way through. That was my thought process. So yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, just hit the button, it's free. And I'd love you. I really want to hit 100 subscribers. I've been sat at like 96 for like, we're just in the 90s for a long time. It goes up and down, but never above the 100. So please, please hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.